Most people think of melatonin as a natural supplement like valerian root that helps sleep. But do you know melatonin is a hormone that's naturally produced in our brain? There are some clinical uses for it, but not the way it's marketed and is used by the general public. So in this video, I will tell you the correct use of melatonin and discuss its benefits and risks associated with it. So stick around. Hey guys, this is your pharmacist Sidra and welcome to Ask Your Pharmacist, which is all about health, pharmacy and beauty. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the sleep hormone melatonin, which is naturally produced in our body. And did you know melatonin does not make you sleep, but as melatonin levels rise in the evening, it puts you into a state of quiet wakefulness that helps promote sleep. This is why melatonin is sometimes called hormone of darkness or vampire hormone because it comes out all night. Now, instead of uh, a lights out trigger, melatonin acts more like a dimmer switch which turns off like day functions and switch night functions on. So taking a melatonin supplement is sort of taking like a dose of sunset that kind of tricks your body into uh, feeling like it's nighttime. So it doesn't actually puts you to sleep as much as it tells your body that it's time to sleep. Now, as the melatonin levels rise, the levels of cortisone, which is a stress hormone, also rise. And both of these actually uh, relax our body and prepares it to sleep. Now, remember, preparing our body to sleep is not putting it to sleep, which, you know, which may take several hours. So melatonin may make you a little bit drowsier when you take it, but it has much bigger impact on regulating the timing of your overall sleep-wake cycle. And it kind of helps set the circadian rhythm or the circadian clock, which is roughly the 24-hour internal. And it's an internal timekeeper that tells your body what time of the day it is, and it syncs it with the outside world. Now, the impact it has on our sleep really depends on the time of the day that you take it. Now, here's an interesting fact that if you take a sleeping pill in the middle of the day, it would make you feel sleepy, right? For example, if you take an Ambien in the middle of the day, it's going to put you to sleep, right? However, if you take melatonin in the middle of the day, it's not going to really have an effect. That's quite interesting, right? And here's why. And that's because the melatonin is synced with the outside world. So if you're taking it in the middle of the day, the melatonin wouldn't really regulate the circadian rhythm. Now, what happens is often uh, our melatonin levels are decreased in the body. And, you know, most people's body produce enough melatonin um, to help us sleep. But for some people, the melatonin levels kind of reduces. And for that, what you can do to help kind of trigger uh, the melatonin level is take a melatonin supplement on a short term basis. If you are experiencing any, you know, insomnia or if you want to overcome any jet lag or basically just you're a night owl and you need to get to bed earlier and wake up earlier for work or school or whatever is going on in your life right now when taking melatonin you have to make sure that you work with it and not against melatonin's sleep inducing signals see melatonin levels naturally rise in our body about two hours before bedtime that's a normal cycle right so make sure you create optimal uh you know settings for for it to do its job by keeping the lights low before going to bed maybe you want to stop using computer or smartphone or your tablet basically lower the blue and green lights because the lights from these devices are going to neutralize the melatonin's effect now if you watch television be sure that you're at least six feet away from the screen and turn off any uh, bright overhead lights because that's gonna trigger the melatonin and help it do its job Meanwhile, you can also help program your body to produce melatonin for sleep at the right time of the day by getting the right exposure to daylight during the morning and afternoon. This is going to actually reset your biological clock and tell your body what time to wake up and what time to sleep. 
for instance, if you follow the good sleep hygiene at nighttime in the morning, uh, when you wake up, make sure you you know, open your curtains, expose yourself to the sunlight. That way your circadian rhythm is reset and your body knows that, okay, this is the time to wake up. Now, every day for a couple of days up to a week, if you do this, like you go to bed at the same time, you take melatonin and you prepare yourself to sleep at the same time. And then in the morning, you wake up to sunlight and do your morning rituals then it's going to reset your body and tell your body automatically in a week or so, so at what time to go to bed and at what time to sleep so then you will be falling asleep at the same time every day and will naturally wake up at the same time in the morning every day isn't that amazing? Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you want to consider melatonin for occasional insomnia. Just use it to reset or jumpstart your natural melatonin production. You don't want to take it all the time because it may disrupt your body's natural ability to produce melatonin. Now, many factors normally, you know, can cause a low melatonin levels at night, such as alcohol consumption, smoking, caffeine, um, if you have a change in your, uh, you know, shift work, if you are aging, certain medications, and also exposure to too much light at night. So if you remove all those factors, then your natural melatonin production is going to uh, start enhancing automatically. Uh, Taking a melatonin supplement may help counter the lower levels and basically will just normalize your internal clock. All right, now let's talk about how much melatonin to take. Honestly, dosage-wide, I would say less is more. You want to start with one to three milligrams for uh, and start take it about two hours before bedtime. For some people, it may show its effect sooner. Like, for example, for me, I take melatonin and in 20 minutes, I'm passed out. Now, however, if you are taking melatonin two hours before bedtime, then you want to follow a good sleep hygiene. Like, don't take me melatonin and go run errands. That's not the way. Also, if you've been taking melatonin for about a week or two and it's not really doing anything for you, then stop using it. Um, and if your sleep problem continues, then talk with your healthcare provider because then probably there's something else that's gonna best suit you. Uh, but if does seem if it does seem to help, then uh, take it nightly for one to two months. After that, stop using it and see how your sleep is. Has it reset itself or is it still causing insomnia? Just be sure you're also relaxing before bedtime, keeping the lights low and sleeping in a cool, dark, comfortable be uh, bedroom for optimal results. And here's something to watch out for. Do not use melatonin if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or have any uh, autoimmune uh, disorder. If you have a seizure disorder or if you have depression, also talk to your healthcare provider if you have diabetes or high blood pressure. You know, a lot of melatonin supplements may raise your blood sugar level and increase your blood pressure. A lot of melatonin products come in a gummy or chewable form and all of these chewable and gummy forms have sugar in them. So if you are diabetic, be watchful of that additional intake of sugar. And also melatonin does tend to interact with some of your blood pressure medications. So uh, do talk to your pharmacist or doctor uh, to uh, rule out any of those interactions. The bottom line is if you already practice healthy sleep habits, but find that they're not really enough for you, then melatonin is relatively cheap safe and effective option to promote good sleep for most people it's not habit forming so that's a good thing and also um you know it doesn't cause dry mouth like benadryl does so that's a good thing well before you start melatonin be sure to talk to your doctor or pharmacist and get an opinion whether it's right for you or not and if it is approved by your doctor or pharmacist it has no interaction with any of other any other medications you're taking then you can start with a low dose of one to three milligrams and you want to start at about 30 uh, minutes to an hour before bedtime 
And if that dose doesn't help, then try increasing your dose from three to five milligrams. Um, you know, just try and remember that stick to that original dose uh, for a couple of days, maybe a week before you make any dose adjustment. Like if you take three milligrams tonight and it doesn't work, then tomorrow don't just go right up to five milligrams. Uh, you want to give three milligrams a couple of days uh, to see if it works before you jump up to the higher dose. Okay. Um, because remember, all good things do not happen overnight. <laughs> Now, also, after taking melatonin, you want to keep a close eye on how you feel the next day. If you're feeling very groggy or you have like hangover like side effect, then your dose is probably too high. In that case, I would recommend that, you know, lower the dose. But in general, the good news is that in short term, at least melatonin is unlikely to do any harm compared to most of the other sleeping pills that have a huge side effect profile and this medication is not going to be addictive all right so this is it for today's video if you have any questions or video recommendations leave them in the comments and i'll see you next time until then take care bye hey guys if you found value in this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and family and remember to subscribe to stay up to date on new weekly videos